and that's why he bring he wants to keep more pieces on the board. Queen f2 trades and then d2 at the end. So you couldn't even play queen f2. Oh gosh, this is scary for both these players. Yeah. I wondered if Magnus was just going to take the draw there. Oh, Queen E3 check. Does he want that? Oh my gosh, Magnus lost oh on time. God. Magnus Look at him. lost on time. He's fuming. Wow. He cannot believe it. Oh my gosh. Magnus, in a very, very rare, uh, in a rare moment, loses on time. He pushed for the win. Uh, we share, by the way, haven't made you yogurt parfait in a while. I made myself a delicious bowl of yogurt parfait this morning. I'm throwing chia seeds in it and some wheat germ, and it's just really good for your digestion. <laughs> well, whatever these players are eating is good for not just their digestion, but their chest as well. I'm jealous. I could use a nice parfait or acai bowl. I would really hit the spot. And Danny, <laughs> I asked you the question at the top of the show. Offbeat openings. There's a pawn on H3 already. So Magnus you, is just kind of doing random stuff. I think you asked it um, because you knew it was going to be an important storyline. You're foreshadowing. That's what good commentators do. Um, and I think the question is getting answered. Who would try to avoid theory more, Magnus or Arjun? Definitely Magnus. Doesn't want Arjun to get deep preparation or even really, I don't think, I don't think he wants to take Arjun into super complicated attacking positions. He wants positional, I don't want to call it boring, but we'll call it, accurate and technical chess. And that's what Magnus would like here today, I, th I think, against Arjun. Well, precise chess is definitely what Magnus Carlsen has displayed time and time again. And Arjun Eric I mean, he is capable of hanging in there with Magnus. We saw even in that first game, it was time trouble that did him in. And in that second game, Arjun was able to obtain a winning position. So for Arjun Eric Geisi, the key is keeping a healthy bit of time left on the clock here out of the opening. Uh, I can't really comment too much on it. It seems like it's just been an exchange French, although it was from the Petrov. And now both yep. sides will be aiming for small pluses. Black has the bishop pair, but Danny, white has the healthier pawn structure. Agreed. And it is a Petrov. Let's note for the uh, fans who might just be tuning in, it's the second Petrov of this match. Uh, Magnus took on E5 in game one as white and took on E5 again here in game two. So again, we're just talking to the broader storyline. What did these players bring to the to the board? What What is the match strategy and their preparation? For Magnus, it looks like I want to get some boring, technical, or at least non-very deeply theoretical prepared lines. But this game, it looks like it's backfiring a little bit. I kind of like Black's And I was wondering, is he going to go G5? This is the aggressive way for Black to play on the king side. And it's our generic Icy style. He is not afraid. Yep. He plays G5. For those of you at home who may wonder what's so bad about G5, it attacked the bishop. Pawns don't move backwards. Not sure if that memo has been received. So this king has a lot of empty space in front of it. This F6 square, for example, not protected by a pawn. The F5 square, also not protected by a pawn. So if, for instance, this bishop leaves and a white knight can enter there, it's hard mm -hmm. to kick it out of your territory. So I still think that Arjun did the right thing, but you have to be careful with the long-term consequences of each and every pawn move. I love when you highlight that pawns can't go back. It's one of those rules I never forget. You know, very few. Very few rules I can remember in this, in this old brain. Um, that pawn on G5, as you said, is an aggressive lever. It might go to G4, right, at, at the right time. You're trying to attack sometimes H5 and then G4. But as Robert pointed out, those are one-way streets. Once you get on them, the pawns, they will not return, and it could backfire down the road for Arjun. But Arjun, he is not retreating. Instead, he is going on the offensive. A knight into C3. What was I saying about pawns moving and can't kick, and pe can't kick pieces out of squares? You would love to push your pawn back to B2 and say, get out of here. But no, that's not how chess works. And Excuse me. Does bishop takes H3 work, or is there some kind of rookie 3 tactic that Magnus is relying on? A uh, nice spot. He might have missed his chance. Um, although rookie three did look, um, might have been one of those weird ways to steal the pawn and then uh, live to tell about it through a through an awkward computer move. But still, black has an edge, dominating on the e file. The knight is so well placed, and don't don't turn your back on bishop takes h three. It could it could come back. Oh, there's going to be opportunity for it. It did not work earlier. I just want to quickly show that. And, you know, I'm yeah. kind of seeing the question mark and wondering, oh, is there a real blunder? But no, bishop takes h3, rook e3, hits the knight, protects the other knight. Uh, maybe even queen e3 was there. But you see that white is the one with the better position. So the point is, bishop takes h3 did not work in the evaluation now going back up for white. Instead, we see rook e8. And Danny, as this game continues here, black is going on the offensive towards the white king. H5, for some reason, considered in um, you know a miss, 
I like the move. I think though. it. I like it too. I think it only might have been because maybe G4 immediately was even possible due to the fact that the F2 pawn is tender. If you look at the queen and the knight hitting F2, but I, I don't know if there was something more concrete other than play G4 and uh, as what would Candy say, G4 for the score, something like that. Here comes <laughs> H5 though, and G4 is next. H5 and we live. G4 for the score. H5. Here we go. I mean, this looks like a problem for That's Magnus. Right. The only good thing about this game is his clock. He is well ahead on time and he is ahead in the match score. Those are the two things that I think are going his way at the moment. But Danny, Arjun has completely outplayed Magnus to this point. And now after this exchange of knights, these double pawns are no better and in fact worse than these central double pawns that Black has. I love the way Arjun plays chess. I just have to say that. And again, that's why the Magnus quote was what it was. The guy is a madman. Dude, this was an exchange Petrov with knight takes e5. And this is how Arjun is going to play chess today. He is creating something out of nothing. He wants to attack. He's aggressive as all giddy up. I think that's an appropriate phrase to say. All, all He's aggressive as anything you can get. And Arjun creating a kingside attack here. Yeah, he has just traded a pair of rooks. He wants to distract one of white's pieces. If the queen ever takes on e1 later in the game, c2 will be loose. If the knight takes on e1, well, all your pieces are in the first rank, and that just looks uh, very unpleasant, and the d4 pawn could be an eventual target. So I like how Arjun's playing. He's telling Magnus, you want to play the style where you avoid opening theory at all costs? I'm ready to take you on in these positions. And speaking of d4 pawn being lost, it just went. Black is up a pawn, but Danny... Those squares on the king side, is black really yep. that happy? Or does white have some chances there to make use of potential weaknesses? I mean, I think white has chances, but I do think Arjun's happy. And I think the H-file could still be more dangerous for black. If the queen goes to E5, you play king G7 and rook H8, and Bob's your uncle on H4, right? Let's do it. Attack. Looks very easy when you put it like that. I think what Magnus is going to rely on, and queen E3... It looks like it's heading for h6, but don't forget about this little a7 pawn. And Arjun is going for your plan, which is wise. He just wants to try to pick up this knight. There's a pin pawn on g3. The king will slide back to g1. And I'm just going to ask you, because I, I don't know for sure, whose king is actually safer here? The white <laughs> king that will go back to g1 or the black king that has many pieces around it? I'm just going to acknowledge what you're kind of saying. You know, you're, you're, you're kind of pointing out the future of this game is very magnus turn aroundable is that a, is that a verb we can use magnus turns around games like this all the time here goes the rook to f4 hitting g4 black is up a pawn up oh, okay black was up a pawn <laughs> but but here comes magnus turning this game around a little bit with black's king under fire despite how dominant arjun has been on the king side throughout i'm quite confused at the moment but i think there could be tactics at some moment queen e3 is there bishop takes g2 in some positions i i I think that uh, was in the air in some lines, but not right away with the F5 pawn being so loose. So right. the point is that there are going to be tactics from both sides. I don't really see why black is so much better here. I don't think either player thinks that black has a two-point advantage here. Yeah, it's fascinating to see how the computer evaluates it. We should highlight a blunder option. If the queen moves... Okay, you moved to D2. If the queen moves to E2, just quickly show the threat here and why this is so tough. If the queen goes anywhere not protecting the rook, here comes rook takes H4 and the game is over. And so this is why Magnus played queen F2 and is going to have to keep an eye on it. And it's weird for us as humans, but maybe it's why the engine just loves black. Because here comes C5, Robert. Maybe Arjun just plays D4. And, and white has a hard time finding moves here the more we look at it. Just watch out for this one move over here. Knight G6 uh, is now in the... Oh, he plays D4 anyway. So Knight G6, there's D takes C3, and yep. uh, White's Queen is under fire. Dude, what if he takes C3, trades Queens on D4, and ends up winning with two pass pawns, despite giving up the Rook on H8? That's exactly what Arjun is aiming for. So that's a really good shout that the Rook on H8... I mean, you can't even get away with taking, uh, trying to take that rook because knight g6, dc3 is just over. Uh, I mean, we could show it on the board. We don't really even need to as Arjun, he's down under a minute. He has plenty of time to work it out. M Magnus tries to close things up as best as possible. Danny, d3, that seems like a good move to open up this queen to either a1 or d4. Yeah, and note that knight g6 doesn't work. Well, queen a1, rook f1, there's rook h1 check. So that would probably be good enough. But you're right, maybe queen d4 is even an even better check than just queen a1. I don't know. It's a position where it just feels like, you know, what does white aim for? Trades shouldn't help that much. The only way a trade is good is if this knight gets back to f4 and the white king gets to e3 and you can corral this d3 pawn. But that feels like a pipe dream. The one 
Good note. Look at the clock, Danny. Under 30 seconds for Arjun. Yep. Yep. That's the one good note for Magnus as you're highlighting. Again, here comes Queen A1, though, because if Rook F1, Rook H1, does that... Okay, he didn't want that. Why? I wonder why he didn't want to get those pieces off. Now the White Knight is going to come to F4. And maybe he just thought his Rook is more active than the White Rook, and there is definitely okay. an argument for that, as the White Rook is simply pinned to the King, and Knight F4 is just a single check. The Black King steps back. I know there were forks in F4, but I was looking at the end of those lines after queen F1, there's like taking on G2 and then the D2 pawn just like gets a new queen. It doesn't, but okay, I, I understand it didn't work, um, but this is very dangerous. Magnus now under a minute. Um, we'll see. This is where Magnus goes into how do I create problems for my opponent mode so that time pressure becomes an issue. That's and one that's way the of kind of move that doesn't. <laughs> I think the, the Black King can safely run away, but there will be another, at least one more check on H7. And if the king goes to c6, there might be a knight check. But I think the black rook in many of these positions can give itself up for a knight that's checking it. And perhaps even the king can just keep running if uh, the sacrifice wasn't up your alley. Yeah. Magnus Troy trying to give checks, trying to create problems. Arjun now down to five seconds. Looks, looks like Arjun just covered everything. I would move this bishop at the... Oh, he doesn't do that. His rook needs to get active. And still good for black, but Danny, those five seconds remaining, mistakes yep. happen. We don't have time. Yep. And nerves, nerves are are a thing that human beings experience. We are not computers. <laughs> and so now Arjun is playing with increment only, really. Gets one second back with every move. Remember that. The white king is safe. The white rook is free. It was in a pin before. And now this white queen is threatening to give a bunch of checks. Down to 2.1 seconds, made that move with 1.1. Magnus now also under 20 seconds, though. Here he goes, trying to open up lines. That was a really smart move, A3, because it's a hard move to anticipate. Here we go. Suddenly it's even, but let's be honest, Danny. This is not just an even game. Both kings are in some harm's way, but I think the black king is in worse shape. Agreed, and Magnus is getting aggressive. This is He's turning things around with just seconds on the clock. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's hard to even suggest a move here. I think that Arjun's figured it out. This knight is hanging. Okay, he's allowing the H file to stay open. I was wondering if he would do this. Now Magnus could be back to losing if that rook swings over. That white he king's can... in trouble. He brings his rook over just in time. Oh, yeah. do not take this. The queen was hanging. I was wondering what kind of blunder that was, but it was not. Magnus repeating moves. Now Arjun wants to draw. Magnus says no, and Arjun down to just little literal increment on the clock. We got a bullet scramble. Two seconds from Magnus. He gets the move off. He's going to repeat again. He's got to bring his rook over. This D pawn is dangerous, Danny. I understand White's up two pawns, but it's about the quality, not the quantity. Yep. The D pawn is dangerous. Arjun still wants to push it. Magnus trying to get the ladies off the board would make his life easy. And that's why he bring, he wants to keep more pieces on the board. Queen F2 trades and then D2 at the end. So you couldn't even play Queen F2. Oh, gosh. This is scary for both these players. Yep. I wondered if Magnus was just going to take the draw there. Oh, Queenie 3 check. Does he want that? Oh my gosh, Magnus lost oh, the time! Magnus Look at him. Lost on time.